welcome everyone. Uh, so every month uh, we do invite potential students and their parents or guardians uh, to hear about the School of Computer Technology programs. Uh, it is delightful to potentially have a larger audience and it is an honor to, to start off uh, presenting our programs to you. So, the, so I am the coordinator of game programming and that's, that's me there. Uh, so we'll start off with uh, some quick stats, uh, and then we'll do some Q&A uh, towards the end. So it is a, an undergraduate diploma, uh, three years to complete. The program began in 2010. Uh, I joined, uh, I believe, uh, two or three years later, I think three years later, uh, and then uh, beca uh, uh, became the coordinator soon after that. So we accept uh, approximately 140 students. That is our target. And we also have uh, the, the percentage of graduates that have received jobs is uh, over 80%. But I say to the students uh, day one that, you know, if they apply themselves and go beyond the curriculum uh, and have as much to show industry as possible, um, even as the curriculum is uh, is going on uh, before graduation, you know it is very possible, and has happened where students will actually uh, get jobs before they graduate, and that is uh, because of the the community of of game programs that we have, uh, and the the other coordinator uh, that I will mention uh, shortly. So students will learn. Um, all the technical skills they need to, to be successful in the job market, you know, specifically game programming, but not necessarily just programming for games, as I, was uh, as I will talk about a little bit later. Um, so learning the programming languages, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, uh, 2D and 3D uh, graphics and game engine development. Uh, so all the, the game platforms, console, mobile PC, uh, and much more. So every facet of, of game programming and game development, uh, except art, which, which I will talk about in a, in a minute as well. So there are two intakes, uh, September and January. Uh, the January intake tends to be a little lighter, uh, but uh, the students only need to take a summer semester if their intake is January. So. Uh, so they'll start first semester January, second semester in, in the summer. And it's, it's similar to a lot of our programs like, uh, like that. Uh, but between uh, fourth and fifth semester is, is, uh, is, is free. And the students will often have uh, game projects to work on or potential internships. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. And the detailed curriculum and requirements, uh, you just need to go to georgebrown.ca and then T163. It's like that uh, with the other, our other programs as well. So simple little URL for all of our programs. So what makes T163 unique? And that's a question that we get a lot. Uh, we have a brand new campus situated in, in Toronto. So a major video game development hub. And hopefully we will get back there soon. Uh, of course, waiting for uh, some more information for the government, but um, maybe starting on a, on a hybrid uh, sort of system with our labs. But we've had a lot of success with, uh, with online delivery, remote delivery with lectures and labs. And our students have all the technology, all the software that they require. Uh, our employees uh, in the industry are specialized in one discipline such as art, programming, design, and others. So you won't have an employee doing you know, both programming and art. And our program does reflect that and it best prepares students uh, for the industry in a job as a, uh, as a game programmer, uh, junior programmer. Uh, now, of course, we have our, our students are aware of the requirements of the artists and designers. So the whole pipeline, but our, uh, our students are uh, prepared to become uh, game programmers. So that was that's uh, that uh, that point here. They are aware of all the expectations of all the other disciplines. 
but they focus on uh, video game programming in our curriculum. Another thing that uh, makes us unique from other programs is we have a strong focus on C++ in the first year. So that's our core programming language. Uh, some other uh, programs use C Sharp now, but we still have, a, so for, for game programming, we still rely a lot on, on C++. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's popular, it's, uh, it's, it's great. It's, a lot of engines will be built on it. Um, but that's what we do. We, we use that programming language, that standalone programming language. And we have a simple multimedia library uh, that we uh, have on top of that. So it's called SDL. And that allows uh, for better input and, uh, and textures. So sprites uh, and animating sprites and, uh, and all the, the sound, the music and sound effects. Uh, and you know other things as required as well. But we don't start off with those popular engines like Unity and Unreal because we want the students to experience you know coding from scratch, which you know is a challenge for them, especially if they haven't uh, if they have no programming experience uh, before. Uh, but we start off simple and then you know we, we start off assuming students, know nothing about programming but we still focus on on that c++ the standalone programming with an extra multimedia library and we don't even touch unity until the the fifth semester so the the third year and that uh is really a, a very easy engine to learn uh, but unreal uses c++ as its programming language, uh, as programming language, so we we then transition to that in the in the second year. So the students have a good foundation of C plus plus, and they can use that when working with a larger, more powerful uh, commercial engine like Unreal. Students do learn all facets of programming, and they experience regular uh, contact and cooperation with the students from the other game programs in their game production uh, stream. So I will talk about that. And, you know, we maintain that, that strong video game community consisting of students and faculty across several programs. And of course, industry partners who we meet with regularly. So speaking to that gaming community, students in second and third year are provided IGDA memberships. So that's a big uh, association that we have. Uh, there are regular meetings at the IGDA, Hand Eye Society. So they're doing a, a big sort of event uh, um, now. And we have a student run game club as well. And the game club brings in industry speakers uh, regularly for seminars, uh, as do you know faculty. We just had one uh, with, uh, with a company called uh, Creatables. Who, uh, who is having uh, our students do, uh, and you know, other students from other schools do a play test. So we just had them speak, uh, come and speak to our students. So GBC uh, hosts game jams such as Global Game Jam and TO Jam. Uh, well, that you know, po uh, you know, pre-pandemic, you know, everything was uh, more active, and uh, but you know, we still maintain that community uh, regardless of you know being. Are having the remote delivery. Student projects are showcased, showcased at yearly events. Uh, faculty enable students to attend game conferences, um, you know, even international ones. And then all projects are a collaboration between you know students in all of our game programs. So if you're interested in seeing our student work, I'm going to uh, list a program here in a second, the the game design postgrad uh, that features work from you know game programmers, game art artists um, under the leadership of the game designers. So these are our core three gaming programs. There's also a concept art um, course as well. But at the undergraduate level, here we have game programming, T163. So they learn, you know, the technical part of it, you know, putting the whole game together. Um, and for the assets, uh, we 
uh, the students aren't uh, aren't evaluated on the assets, but um, so they'll get them themselves or they're provided by faculty, uh, and then they just use those in their games. So 2D, 3D game production. Uh, so all of the different platforms, console, mobile, and uh, and implementing um, XR, so VR and AR uh, into those, and game engine development. So in each of the three years, they will develop their own uh, engines or frameworks. And in that first year, it starts off with you know a very simple framework of C++ and SDL. But even then, we go through you know how to create a game engine. Uh, what are all of the the managers required? Um, so we implement object oriented even in the first semester, uh, but elaborate on that in the second. Uh, bring in more advanced concepts like data structures and and templates. On the game art side, so I will elaborate a bit more on T163, the whole uh, three years in a minute. So the, the game art side of it, so G119, the concept art, 2D digital, digital drawing, 3D modeling and animation, there are different streams, uh, and they do th go through some game engine scripting as well. Not uh, not the level, the in-depth level of programming that we have, but they still need to, to, uh, to go into an engine so they can uh, bring in their assets, their models, their textures, uh, and manipulate those. And then in the postgraduate level, we have the game design program. So students in either uh, program, when they finish, they can choose to take the, the, uh, the short uh, curriculum for game design certificate. If they're interested a bit more about design, storytelling, uh, level design, the business. And these students use, uh, use students from, uh, well, employ, I say employ with, with uh, double quotes because it's, you know, it, it's a studio environment, a simulated studio environment. Uh, our work integrated projects, if you will. So they have, they employ students from game programming and game art to actually make their games. So if you're interested in seeing the result of these, you know, these large student projects, then I would uh, suggest that you go and look at the game design program while you're here with us today. So briefly, I'll go over the, the year one or, or the, the outlines. Um, so there are different streams in our program. Uh, the first year's programming stream consists of introduction to programming. So that's where we introduce our students to, you know, C++ and, you know, the, the main programming language that we're going to use. Uh, and we assume that the students know nothing about game programming. Although nowadays it's, you know, they will have some uh, experience through through their, uh, through their high school. Um, our game fundamentals program is, uh, is a, a kind of complementary uh, course that, uh, that goes over what a game is, what a game engine is. Uh, it, it is really meant to, comp uh, to complement the, the core programming stream. And this is where in game fundamentals, that's where the students will develop their, their frameworks. So they'll actually put games together uh, in, in the fundamental stream here. And then the second semester, we introduce artificial intelligence. But, um, and after semester two, you know, there will be elements of you know, physics and AI in all of their games that they do. But we introduce AI uh, with uh, you know, movement decision-making uh, at a basic level in semester two. Now, I say basic, but we do go through the main, like even pathfinding, so Baxter's algorithm, A-star, uh, which are by no means simple, but we use SDL as a tool, as a visual tool to, to demonstrate these algorithms for the students. Uh, and that really helped. So our game production stream is where the students will actually get together in groups, uh, especially in the first year to design and implement a 2D game. Uh, and then in the game production streams in third, uh, sorry, second and third years, they will have an opportunity to, to, uh, to, to showcase their work to their faculty and potentially get uh, promoted. Um, to uh, uh, an, an, in an objective manner to work with the game design students. Of course, we've got the math stream, which starts at a again at a simple level and then and then ramps up. So that's common with with all of our programs. And then in the uh, in the second and third year, it's just evolving 
these topics and, and branching out. So if you imagine our program as a tree, it starts off with the, the trunk, which is a, a strong focus on C++ and then it branches out from there. I really should illustrate that sometime with our, our different programs, but but that's what it is. That's what our program um, does. It starts off with a with a strong focus on on programming with C++ and then branches out from there. So we get into graphics programming. Um, the students will, uh, you know, uh, create a even more advanced game engine, so a 3D game engine. Uh, but um, now with the game engines of the game engine stream, that's where they will will uh, look at uh, Unreal. They'll use Unreal and then Unity to make their games. So you can see physics. So we have all facets. We even have multiplayer. Uh, and then in the sixth semester, it's it's focused on uh, taking everything they've done in the course and making it ready to show, like portfolio. So even even in, in day one, we we encourage the students to uh, save what they have or or think or keep what they have developed, because that's uh, how you really get a job. The more they show, or the more or the more they have to show and prove that they can actually do the job um, that industry requires, the better. And yeah, so mobile and console, so focus on in the uh, in the third year, just branching out into the different uh, platforms as well. So our industry connection. So our faculty are engaged with industry, you know, as employees of a studio themselves, managing their own. Uh, and some of our faculty have even employed um, exceptional students. Our industry. Um, like other programs, like other SCT programs, industry does help shape to uh, shape our curriculums through regular meetings. So several times a year, we have our, our uh, PAC meetings. And through constant connection to industry, employers will become familiar with our students you know, even before they graduate. And like I said, a lot of exceptional students will have jobs lined up already before they graduate. So local employers who have hired uh, graduates, this needs to be updated, but 13 AM Games, Gameloft, Relish, Ubisoft, uh, sorry, <laughs> Rockstar, Ubisoft, uh, and Zynga. Game development is a global industry, uh, but you know, GBC students have been hired in positions, uh, including internships, uh, internships as far away as Australia. So you can't, if you wanna get a job, um, you know, I'm not going to say unfortunately, but you can't stay local. You have to go where the jobs are, and our students understand that. Uh, so I know we have some Q&A coming up, so I'll just uh, wrap up. Um, but there are different uh, different types of programmers that students can you know, identify with during the program. Um, some may like AI over uh, you know, just general programmers. Some, some may take to, to the graphics part of it. So there are different levels or different types of, of uh, programmers in the game industry. And then game programmers could potentially make uh, uh, 72,000, an average of over 72,000. It's an older survey, but um, but yeah, they tend to make uh, a good, uh, they, yeah, they can have a good career. So admission requirements, these are on the site. All right, you can check the site for that or check this video again. And I do have some uh, frequently asked questions. Um, I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna go over these. Uh, we, I, I've said we, we focus on the, uh, the coding for games, not the asset creation. Uh, our class schedules, our breakdown four hour classes, potentially have a, uh, we'll have a shared two hour lecture with two hour labs. Uh, three hour classes could have multiple time slots. Um, but what we have in our program is uh, we, for the second and third years, it's, it's mostly practical. So we have a lot of labs, whereas the theory um, is mostly, we like to keep the theory to the, you know, the first year or, or as, as we go, as the students uh, progress, there's, there's less theory and just a lot of practical. And even, in, even with the pandemic, it's been successful. Um, like I said, the students have all the technology uh, free that they require or through GBC, our apps anywhere, for example. No prior coding experience required. Uh, 
required materials. Mid, mid range PC laptop does help. Uh, our students don't have to render uh, 3D models or anything like that. Um, though they, they do tend to like, uh, they do tend to play games or, or, or uh, you know, have a laptop where they can do that or a computer where they can play games. But we don't encourage you know, playing games, especially during class. Um, so we get the co-op question quite a bit, uh, but through our game production stream, that is where our field placements can potentially come in as well. So not only working with game design students, but our uh, my counterpart in uh, uh, JP Amore, the, co uh, the coordinator of the, of the game art and design programs, uh, he has a, a very strong connection to industry and often does uh, connect students with field placements. Are students limited to the game industry? Um, no, um, and we've had students, um, you know, come go back and forth between our, our general programming course uh, that Maziar is going to talk about. Um, but no, uh, our program teaches a wide variety of, of languages and uh, we've had students, maybe not necessarily in the game industry, but they uh, like the, the medical industry or, you know, any sort of um, what's popular right now is, is VR. So a company that wants to use VR as a, as a training tool, um, they will employ game students and they have. Uh, this needs to be updated, not T127. Uh, and you know, is there uh, help or tutors? Absolutely. So every semester we have uh, tutors, peer tutors available for students and available for all of our subjects. And if you need the software hardware requirements here, uh, it's basically just a mid, mid range, uh, but you can contact me if you need those technical specs. And there's my contact info, admissions contacts, and again, there's our website. Okay, I think, let me see. Uh, Okay, uh, so speaking of that, there we go. So your question, what specs exactly does the PC or laptop need? Hopefully you can see this. Uh, so Windows, uh, I prefer Windows, but Mac is okay as well. Because the primary uh, IDE the, the coding tool we use, software that we use is Visual Studio. Now there are, of course, Mac options. But um, eight gigs of RAM is, is good enough. Like I said, our students don't have to, uh, to, to render anything, render 3D models. But the, uh, you know, the engines, especially Unreal Engine 4, uh, is pretty, uh, requires a, a decent computer. But here are the specs here. 